Hi, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, the Art Sherpa, and today I'm going to show you how you can do an easy bokeh rose background. This is absolutely perfect for Belle and the Beast, but of course you can put any figure in here that you want. Get your paint, get your brushes, get your pouncer sponges, come back and meet me at the easel right now. We're going to bokeh. So I'm going to show you how to get this easy rose bokeh background in. Your first material is an 11 by 14 canvas board. You could use stretch canvas or canvas board. That preference is up to you. And really, honestly, this would work on any size that you have. Over here, I have my acrylic materials. I have my acrylic heavy body paint. I have cad yellow, medium. I have quinacridone magenta, titanium white, dogzine purple, and phthalo green. And in the center, this weird milky plop is acrylic glazing liquid in gloss. If you can only get like semi-gloss or another finish, that's okay. I just really personally enjoy the gloss and this is gonna help me really, really get my beautiful effect. I have here a number six stencil mini. So I really like this, it has a bristle. It's nice to slightly dampen the bristles, take off the extra water and then, this is an interesting thing, you're gonna take like a towel or a paper towel, and I don't wanna get this in my paint, but just really dry this out, right? You're gonna dry that out. You want them damp, but not soaking, because if they're too damp, they'll get too soft and it won't give you the nice effect that you want. I'm gonna take this number six, and I'm gonna bring it over here at first. I'm gonna get it into my yellow, and my quinacridone, so I'm going my cad yellow to my quinacridone and I'm gonna make a very pink orange. This is an orange that feels very pink and then I'm gonna add a nice amount of white to it. Right, right here. And then I might even get my glazing medium in there. And so that's all ready to go and I'm gonna just start doing these little circular motions in the center here. So what I'm trying to do is to create this light halo effect where it's brightest in the center and then it lightens softly as it goes out to give that feeling of romance. So whatever you're going to be adding to this background, whether you're going to add Belle and the Beast, like, or your own character, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're creating that sense of focus and romance in here. So you can just see I'm dusting around in a circle and it creates this beautiful almost airbrush effect. If you've ever done a beauty blender or anything like that, you're gonna be really familiar with how this works. So I'm gonna come in here. I think I wanna even lighten up the center a bit. So I'm gonna get a little of my yellow into there. A little of my glaze and just come right in the center. Just a little bit. Cause I really, really want this to feel like there's just this filtered light coming in the garden, circling around. You can see that. So if you're wondering my brush is engaged with the canvas. The tips of the bristles are all touching, but I'm not pressing in hard like this. See that hard press? I'm not. I'm just dusting. This is just dusting. So that's your success path for this, is to just dust, and that's how you're gonna get the blend that you're looking for. Now, as I'm going, I'm gonna take a little of my yellow back into my quinacridone getting a, that darker kind of pinkish orange. I'm gonna add a little less white this time. There's my glaze. And I'm gonna start coming around this outside. See, this is a very romantic background color. It's like the canvas is having a blush, isn't it? And I'm gonna keep blending. And where these edges are, I'm gonna just go over it softly so that they soften in together. Isn't that nice how that works? 
The glaze helps me get a lot of pigment around my canvas. It's like we're aging the canvas with just a pink blush, isn't it? Just going in these beautiful circle motions. It's a really fun background to do. Get some more glazing medium. Make sure that this side is also getting a nice blush. Come in bigger circles, and then as I need to work it out, I just Feather, 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 feather. You're going to be layering, and that layering really makes all the difference when you're going. So now I'm pulling in some more of my quinacridone magenta. I still want to keep a bit of yellow in that. And my glaze. And this is my outside edge. There we go. Start creating that vignette. Packing up. And just softly blending into the lighter pink. This is a bit like that shake weight workout, if you remember that. Just so just keep going around dusting in your color. Just blending, blending and dusting. I like to make sure I really darken my little edges. Sometimes I have to flip my canvas to get a nice dust on my bottom side because I'm on a standing easel. And ever if you're finding you're having trouble getting to a spot on your canvas that you're trying to, like I'm chasing a little, little bristle off there, that'll happen sometimes with bristle brushes. They're shedders. They'll lose one on occasion. All right, getting a little more of my color. I mixed and finishing out my edges over here. That's what we're doing. We're just creating this lovely halo. halo. Just blending that in. Just softening that out. This is a great background and we're going to look at a lot of ways to make this work for our paintings over the summer. This is a good fun introduction to this method. Flip again, like you do. Just keep dusting around. Where things are starting to dry, I can come back over with my glaze and my circular motion. And you can see that starts to give me the most incredible blend. I'll let this dry a little bit and I'm gonna come with my final darkening. Pull out a lot more quinacridone. And a smidge of glaze. And I'll come and work just these outer edges of the canvas, layering up. Building up. I'm going to make sure that I can build up over here. If it's super, super wet, you may want to dry really fast with a hairdryer. Okay, and then once it has a little bit of tack, you can come and age and dust over here in the corner. Look at that, how well that does. 
So this is just one of those beautiful effects. You'll look like you just spend hours and hours working that. Really, you'll have made quick work of it. Just dusting this all in. So check your canvas. Make sure you feel lovely with its glow and how it's focusing its light. Definitely rinse out your bristle brush. Now I'm gonna dry my canvas really quick and then show you how to throw in these gorgeous, easy, everybody can do them, bokeh roses. So the first step in easy bokeh roses is of course to put in our bokeh dots and we're gonna use our pouncer sponges to do that. I'm gonna take my largest pouncer sponge so you're just looking for any round pouncing sponge that gives you a nice firm surface. I'm not gonna get these wet because if you get them wet, they're likely to pull a bubble on you. And I'm not even gonna put it in the glaze because it'll do the same thing. I'm going to pull this into my quinacridone magenta simply by coming and pulling to the side like you see here, right? Pulling to the side. All right, and I'm swirling it around. You can see I'm getting a nice coating, but it doesn't have to be that solid. And I'm gonna get a little of my white too. I don't want an even coating of paint because then I won't get all the variants I want. And just come maybe even add a smidge. You can see a dot of purple. So I'm gonna hold my canvas firmly and I'm going to come and press in and twirl, press in and twirl. I layer my bokeh. Let me move my hair dryer out of the way for a second. I might even take some of them half off the canvas. And I'm making, try to imagine that you're making a garden where the roses are arcing over your figures. You know, we're gonna have Belle and Beast in here. That's what I'm gonna show you in part two. But you can put anybody you want to in the center of your garden. I'm gonna come get a little more red now. Swirling around, you can see that swirl. And some white. And twirl these. Just having a blast. Put that flower pretty far out, but mostly as I'm coming down here, they're going to pull back. This lets the couple sort of be over the top of them. I'm gonna grab a little more red here. And I'm gonna pick a couple flowers. I'm gonna say this one right here, this one, Put this one here. I think we need a couple centrals here and there. So let's make a central one here. And so these are dots that we do last that are forward facing so that when we go to put in our roses, they're right there. So right in the middle of these, and then maybe some there. So once I have those in, I definitely want to rinse out my sponge, right? Because I don't want to leave the paint on the sponge. That will ruin it. And I'm going to dry my canvas so I can put in the brighter yellow dots for the twinkling sparkle effect. When your canvas is dry and you're sure that the purple won't lift into your bright yellow, you can take your little pouncer sponge and come over to your white Pull some out, see how I'm pressing it out? You just grab a little with the edge, press it out, swirl it around. And I'm also gonna come over into my yellow and swirl it around. So I should have a good mix of yellow and white on my sponge. And I'm going to come in and layer little round bits. I wanna leave some of my focus roses there so that's something to think about. And layer them over each other. Make some of them light by pressing lightly and some of them dark by pressing harder. This is the magic 
that we're seeing around. And we want to leave this space open if you're going to be doing Bell and Beast so that you don't have yellow layering too much on the yellow of her dress. But you definitely want to be telling the story of these just twinkling lights. And if you do happen to go over a place you plan on putting a rose, that's fine. You're just going to paint over it anyways. Don't panic. It's more important to create the effect of magic. anything else. Should just be a delightful background. There we go. So I feel like that's a little bit. I might grab a little more of this right here. Just get it to where you're happy. Where you just feel like, wow, that's a that's a special glowing atmosphere. Definitely rinse this out too. And now it's time to paint in the super easy roses everyone can do. And yes, you can totally do these. So my choice is I'm going to get a small brush that gives me really a lot of control. Something small in detail that I can handle easily inside my little roses. This has paint all over it, but I can still see it. It is a number two filbert. Okay, so this is a little different than say my long handle filbert, right? This is a four and this is a two. Those, those seem relational. You're just looking for a very small detail brush that will let you work inside your roses. I'm going to come here and I'm going to get this brush a little bit wet, take off the extra water and I'm going to get a little white and a little of my yellow, and I'm going to start in on my first rose. Let's put our first one right here. This one will be yellow. I'm going to make a wobbly C, and I'm going to thicken it. See that right there? There we go. And it's going to have another little C friend that tucks in and comes out. Grabbing a little yellow and white, curling around these guys. He's again another little sea friend. And he's got a very uneven little backside, doesn't he? Kind of like a little mountain range. Coming around. There's lots of ways to talk about how these types of roses are built. I've heard it compared uh, to bricks. I've interlocking but the point is is that you're coming around tucking these petals around each other and I'm using the circle of the bokeh and the shading it creates to create the shadow of the flower. Isn't that fun? You can use glazing too if you need to to improve the flow off your brush. Just Painting my little rose in. See, ever, ever lapping flower petals out. Look at that. Now I can get some pink, some straight pink. Glazing if I need it. And maybe make a flower right here. Same thing. I'm going to curve a little petal shape. It's like a C. Curve another little friend around it. Just bright pink. Having fun now. And curve a little petal around them. So I don't go all the way around. Right? If I'm to pick another little space, I'm going to say maybe I'll go around halfway around here. I try not to make too smooth a line because nature's not going to give me a smooth line. I'm going to pull this nice big fat petal out. The fact that the quinacridone is slightly transparent and I'm using glaze is actually helping me because a lot of the shading and character is created by the bokeh dot underneath. 
So I don't even have to worry about doing that. This rose garden is just coming together so easy. Now you could also get some of your purple in quinacridone. Because there might be some purple flowers in the garden. This could be like a purple flower right here. And I'm making my interlocking C's. Curving around like a puzzle piece. So I have a petal here curving around. I'll bring that petal way far out, each of these ends tapering. You can even grab, if you want to have some interesting color changes, you can grab a little white. I might tuck this petal in and let it taper off the edge. So you can see they taper at their ends, they get wide at their bellies, their middles. I made a little tiny peeking out petal. And I'm going to let that bokeh layer over this rose. Well, I've got this lovely purple out, I could come across here and make a purple, or I could come up here diagonally and make a purple. I think I'll come up diagonally and make a purple. I'm going to mix this into my quinacridone, add a little white to it for interest. Now my brush has gotten a little gumpy, so I'm going to wipe out and pick up my paint. Come over here, make a little C shape, tuck its little C friend in. Petal is wide at the belly and tapered at the ends. It's okay if my paint is streaky, it just makes it feel like the petals have color variants in them, like flower petals kind of often do, don't they? Even on the same bush, they'll show out their own their individuality. And the polka dots are helping me remember to just keep it simple and keep it round. Now it might be nice to have some super light pink flowers. So I could take a little of my quinacridone over to my white until I get a very, very light color. And I can do some of that. Little petal pink, almost white flowers. Again, creating crazy little C's interlock and overlap each other. Let them taper out. Sometimes where I have a little spot peeking out, I can do that. Creating interest. I could have another yellow and white flower. Those are super fun. One right here. Here's a little C. Curve one around. Fat little belly. All wobbly. Could have a little friend come on the edge. Fat little belly. It's amazing how fast you start to get all these fun little colors in there. I can take my quinacridone and my yellow, come up here in my corner, make an orange. Same process. If I feel like tucking that behind the bokeh, I can. I don't have to worry about that. It's 
mine, it's yours. They're like, oh, I need some flowers over here. You just decide where your garden needs to grow. And then start adding petals to your bokeh dots that need petals. Let the layers of paint do the work. I think I could tuck a flower off here and one more and be done with it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some bright pink. And come here and tuck a flower right off. So I'm going to do is have a little bit of my seed coming out. I'm just going to imagine some of the flower that I'm not seeing curling around. And I'm just going to tuck what I can see off here. And because it's light, it just implies that. Come get some brighter bokeh. Or maybe right here. These can be light implied flowers. They don't all have to be as dark. And so if they're fainter, then they'll push back. Like they're more distant flowers. When you have the amount of flowers that you want, and everything is balanced in a way that you like, that's when you get to stop and put in leaves. I'm grabbing some purple down here. See how I'm just creating this soft, slightly out of focus flower. And that's the other thing that these little pre bokeh dots will let you do is let you create some roses that are maybe distant and faded out. You like the roses you put in. Listen, if you want to put roses on every dot, you can. And if you want just a couple of roses, you can do that too. It's really up to you. Let me show you a really easy leaf. I'm going to get a filbert. A filbert is like a bright, but it's rounded. It looks a little bit like a cat's tongue. This is a number four filbert. And I'm going to dip it in water. Wipe it off here because I think there was some sizing still in it. Sometimes I resize after I wash. I'm going to dip in, drag off the extra water, and I'm going to do a neat thing here. I'm going to come to a clean spot of my yellow and pull it out in a clean spot of my green. Can you see how I'm getting kind of yellow and green on the brush at the same time? I'm going to pick a couple places and I'm going to do a curve line and a curve line and that's going to give me a little leaf. So I can always bring a little green over if I need it. Rinse back off again. And come and load. A little green on my outer edge. Loading here. So I just press down, pull and then pull to a little leaf point. And the two colors on my brush help create the definition of this. So you see how that's got green and yellow? Let's find another couple of places to put some leaves. You can add a little water. I'm loading just the edge of the brush. I'm going to come here and load just the edge of the brush. And I'll move my canvas so that I can get an angle that I like. So I might put a leaf right here. Pulling one down here. Maybe load a little yellow this time. Pull a leaf right here pointing out. A darker one there. I'm going to also rinse out my brush off and, and reload so that I can keep this streaking little leaf effect that I'm trying to go for. And pull out a little green. 
grab a little yellow. Just pulling this in. Just trying to make sure that they're all slightly different. Grab a little yellow. Rotated my brush to pick a different edge of it and I got a darker green and that's something that you can do. You tuck one there. I'm kind of picking spots right here like by this rose that are by my roses. So I don't really have to, you know, just guess where to put leaves. I think, well, where I'm seeing roses, that's where I'm going to see leaves. I'm going to put some more yellow on my brush. Tuck a little leaf here. If I lose my tip, I can come in and go ahead and fix that, right? There, just having some fun. Grab a little green. Maybe make another little leaf friend. That one has a lot of leaves. Might curve this leaf back a little bit to make some differences. Get some more yellow paint. I feel like that's not really covering. And I may rotate just to make sure that I'm always stroking to an angle that's strong for me and not fighting my own arm. So when I feel like I've got enough foliage and roses to show that I have a Boca Rose background, then I'm finished and I can go put my main central figure in which for me is gonna be Beauty and the Beast. I hope you'll follow me along with that. But of course it's your painting. So put anything in there that makes you happy. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other. And I wanna see you at the easel really soon. And I mean really soon. Bye-bye.